Hey, my name is Chance. I work for the Rad Dynamics team here at Specialized. Uh, we're going to take you inside one of the Genie Shocks, go through some common services and a little bit of tunability. So, we'll get into it. Uh, just like any other shock, obviously take the air out of the shock. Uh, this is not specific to Genie, but you should take your air out slowly. You'll see the shaft uh, slowly compress until it hits the transfer port. And then you're taking air out of both chambers at the same time. So this will start coming in. It'll stabilize right there and then keep going. If you pass that point and your shock sucks down, you want to air it back up, swap the, the sleeve between the two or swap air between the two chambers again and then redo it. You don't want air trapped in the negative spring. All right, once all air is out, first we can take off the outer sleeve. All you have to do, we're going to push up on the XV sleeve just to take a little bit of pressure off this wire ring. A little bit of push only moves about a half a millimeter up. You can use a plastic pick or sometimes even your fingernails to just pull this wire ring off. It's very simple. Wire ring comes off. And then you just need to pull the XV sleeve down. There's two O-rings that are holding it in place, so a little bit of twisting motion helps and the outer sleeve comes off. And then from there, we just have a normal thread on air sleeve. You'll want to just twist this off, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Your sleeve comes off and you slide off like that. All right, and then we'll take this over to the mat and we'll look at all the, the seals. All right, so quickly we'll talk about the anatomy of of a genie shock. Uh, there's not a lot of differences between your standard air sleeve. Uh, it's very similar. Uh, we really only have an addition of this outer sleeve. That's how we get our extra volume. Aside from that, when it comes to, to seals and service parts, they're actually shared uh, primarily with a Fox float. So your main quad seal is the same as a Fox float. All of these seals, your negative seal, uh, your dust wiper, all of that is the exact same as a stock Fox float. So if you're familiar with doing air sleeve services at home, or if you have a shop that's doing them, they're gonna be very comfortable doing this. No extra tools required. It's very simple. Um, so we can get into some of the tuning aspects of the shock. Um, again, there's a lot of similarities to your normal shock, but we do have some two chambers to tune now. So getting into the XV uh, spacers, they're really easy to play with. You actually have, they come into two pieces. If you wanna add a spacer, you just, Clip this guy on like this. You get it on one end, flip it over, and then compress until it snaps. And you've installed a spacer. To remove the spacer, you're just going to do the opposite. You can clip this off with a, a little pick or a flat blade screwdriver, uh, and you can and remove them pretty easily. The times you'd want to be playing with the outer volume is when you want to make the bike feel a little bit more sporty, uh, progressive and uh, kind of better for flow trails and things like that. You are gonna give up some bump performance with that. Uh, that's why we spec it with one spacer. We're really accentuating how this bike uh, rides through rough terrain with that setting. If we wanna get into how the shock rides at the very end of the stroke for bottom outs and, and support there, it's gonna be your traditional eyelet volume spacer. So you wanna slide the, the bumper out of the way. There is a steel washer, slide that up. We've moved up the jounce bumper and the steel washer, and we've exposed the blue 0.2 volume spacer. You can clip that off. Uh, a plastic pick's good or a little screwdriver. Just be careful not to nick the shaft, but it just pries up and clips right off. And that spacer comes out. You can run it without that spacer in there. You're gonna be tailoring your end stroke down a little bit. So if you're not using full travel, you want to get a little bit more out of your spring, you can remove this. But let's say you are having a bottoming issue and you want to add a little bit more support right at the end of the stroke, you can opt for the 0.4 volume spacer. And same thing, you're just going to clip this guy right on. You want the Fox logo facing up. And there is a keyed feature, just like the fo any stock Fox float. You want to dial it in on the key and it'll snap right in place. clips in. It is important to note, you do want the spacer flush 
with the boss of this eyelet. You don't want it sitting proud. And then we'll slide the washer and the jounce bumper back into place. All right, as, as far as getting these parts, uh, service related parts or the volume spacers, all of your volume spacers are gonna come with the bike. Every one that you can fit in the shock comes with it, so you don't have to hunt those down. As far as service related parts, uh, Fox is gonna support this just like their own. So you can go on their website, you can, you can buy damper service kits and air spring service kits. Um, a lot of the seals within this shock are uh, shared across their stock float shock. So the really important seals are actually the same. Uh, the shock doesn't have any new moving parts to it. So we have your dynamic seal here, your quad ring, that's the same as a Fox float, as well as the negative and dust wipers are all the same as a Fox float. So you can buy the complete Genie service kits, or in a pinch, you could always use the parts uh, out of a, a standard float shock for those high wear items. Uh, we do have a couple of unique parts, um, but it's very simple parts. On the XV sleeve, you have two O-rings. You have this guy here. They're the same O-ring, and they're a very standard O-ring. They're also, like I said, they're not dynamic, so these do last a long time. They don't really wear. They're just a static O-ring holding air, not something moving. Uh, the one most unique part is the Genie band, and this just slides right off. There's a slit in it, and you can remove this. They're extremely durable. We actually don't even uh, include this in the 50 hour service kit. This goes into the damper service kit. We have yet to wear one out. They're very, very durable. So you can usually set that aside in your air sleeve service and just reuse it. There are a couple O-rings underneath the piston band. They don't seal anything. They actually just give a little bit of energy to this to help this seal without being too tight. Uh, again, these are kind of passive O-rings. Uh, they do not wear very quickly, so we expect them to last a very long time, even though they are included in a 50-hour air sleeve service. So in terms of how the Genie shock functions and how it differs from your standard shock, uh, one of the keys with this, sh one of the coolest parts about this shock is it is very simple in the way that we're doing things. Like I said, there's no new moving parts within this shock. The Genie band is a unique part. Most shocks are not going to have this bushing here but we just attach that bushing to the already moving main seal head. That seal head moves up and down through the stroke, and as it moves up and down through the stroke, it correlates with cross holes in this uh, air sleeve and cuts off that volume. So you have an air sleeve that would already exist in a normal shock. We've just added some cross holes and added our extra volume here by sliding on an extra volume air sleeve, and we just create the two chambers by having this outer sleeve that is cut off from the inner air, air chamber. Again, no new moving parts. There's no funny mechanisms or springs that need to, to actuate or anything like that. We're exploiting the architecture that already exists within a normal shock to create as little extra parts as possible to create the Genie effect. It is worth noting that the damper on the Genie shock is not any different than a standard float shock. So as far as service goes, uh, any shops or even individuals who are already doing services on these type of shocks will have no issues with them. Uh, there is only one special tool to remove the, the air seal head. Uh, Fox does offer that on their website. Aside from that, it's going to be all the same specs. IFP settings and all that will be the same. Uh, from here, we can just go through a quick reassembly of the air sleeve. Uh, so I'll put the spacers back in, put the piston band back on, and we'll air this thing back up and have it ready to ride. So first we'll start, we'll put the Eyelet spacers back in. Comes with a 0.2 is our OEM spec. Put that on. Genie band has a split. We'll just slide that back over the, the shaft. Clip that in. XB spacers one is our production spec. We'll put that back on. There we go. Now we're ready to slide the air sleeve on just like any normal float shock. So we'll go back to the vise. All right, so we've greased all the seals. We've got a little bit of 20 weight gold on there and we'll slide the air sleeve on. You will wanna just make sure your uh, genie band and all your seals are in place as you slide this on and nothing snags. Get that on there. Now when sliding the air sleeve on, you can push past the transfer port and that'll help make things a little bit easier. There we go. And then we'll Start threading the air sleeve on. All right. 
air sleeve, torque that. Do not over torque that, it doesn't require a whole lot. And then we're ready to install the extra volume sleeve. This is directional, you cannot put it on the wrong way, so you're not gonna mess that up, it will only fit one direction. You can use the decal as a guide. And orient your decal so it lines up with the side of the shock you want it to. And then with the XV sleeve in place, we'll put the wiring back in. Now just ensure that your wiring is in place uh, before you air it up. It's always good to pull the sleeve down and keep that guy in place before you air your shock up. Put our travel o-ring back on and now it's time to air the shock up. I know we've got air in our shock. It's always important to equalize the positive and negative. You can do this on the bike. We have a hand dyno here, so we'll do it this way. So now we've just pressurized the positive spring. We need to energize the negative spring. The transfer port on this shock is only about uh, 10 to 12 millimeters into the stroke. So it's important not to go too deep and you wanna go slow so you can cross that port and get the positive and negative to transfer. You can usually feel and hear the transfer port, so bring it down to the point, and you'll feel the spring get a bit softer. Now it is worth noting, whatever pressure you put in the positive spring, you've now given some to the negative spring, so your pressure is actually lower than you, the pressure you actually put in there. So it's important to put the pump back on, repressurize the shock to your intended pressure, and then re-equalize again. I often do this with the pump on, just be careful if you're cycling it on the bike, you don't hit your valve. When you are transferring, you will actually see your pressure drop once it equalizes. So I had about 120 PSI, it's gone down to about 110. I'm going to continue going up. It's good to do this in increments so you're not fighting against a really stiff spring. And I've got myself at my intended pressure. This process is not specific to Genie, just about any shock with the transfer port will have the same process. All right, we install it, ready to ride.